So this year on our homestead we decided to try out a different breed of meat chicken. So we actually went with a breed called a Western Rustic. And last year what we had was we had Cornish Giants. And with our experience with the Cornish Giants, they did not do very well for us at all. We had a lot of troubles with them, so this year we wanted to try out a different breed and see if there was any change. And from what we can tell so far is there's a big, big change between the two breeds. So for the Western Rustics, um, we were able to put them out on pasture at three weeks old. We just wanted to get them out of the shed and they're fully feathered and it was just it was time to put them out on pasture. So when we put them out here, they did really well. We even had a night where it actually froze and despite that, they still did really well. We had nobody die and they were foraging really well on the grass. So we really had a bad time with the Cornish Triangle. Last year, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. They are definitely a breed that I don't think that our homestead will ever get again. Um, just because of the experience that we had with them, they they really did not do well in our colder climate and our way of moving them in uh, poultry tractors. So the Cornish Giants last year, we actually ended up raising them to 12 weeks old. And despite us raising them to that age, they still only dressed out at about three pounds, maybe four if we were lucky. So for us having to put all that work and time and energy into raising them for that much longer, they still did not perform. And so because of that reason alone, we will not get them again. But also, um, we just found that that breed of chicken was really not intelligent at all. Um, if it was raining, a chicken tractor that had a roof over it on the majority of it probably about three quarters of the chicken tractor was covered and if it was raining I swear to you they would literally go in the spot that wasn't covered and stand in the rain and get poured on and get cold and die so and then when you would move the chicken tractor for one it's a big cumbersome building that we had last year and we had to move it with a quad so that probably wasn't not the best scenario to judge that by but they would stand at the back of the chicken tractor and get run over by it, and they just would not move. So we had to have someone moving it with the quad, and it worked better if we had two people inside the chicken tractor, because it was tall enough that we could stand in it. We had to have two people inside the chicken tractor actually pushing them forward and getting them to move so they weren't getting squished by it. So it was a big process to move them, and we were moving them about every two days. So definitely did not work out well in that regard. Um, I found that they, they just didn't act like chickens. They were literally this monstrous type of bird. They acted like dinosaurs. All they would do is just eat, 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 eat. They would never quit eating. If they had food in front of them, they would eat. And they were not durable chickens at all. We had a lot of deaths. By the time we were done, I think we had lost at least close to half of our birds by the time they were ready to be butchered. Um, just because of dying from getting run over by the chicken tractor or having too much stress and having heart failure or they would die from the elements despite having a heat lamp in with them until they were about six weeks old and very much fully feathered. So yeah, for those reasons we definitely will not be trying that right again. But this year we decided to go with Western Rustics and we've been really happy with them. Big, big difference between the two breeds for sure. These guys have done 
really well on pasture. We built a different style of chicken tractor for one, so that has helped reduce the stress because we are able to actually move that one by hand and move it a lot slower and everything's more quiet and just a lot less stress on the birds for sure. But they act like chickens. They have a little bit more intelligence for sure. They seem to be foraging around and scratching around in the grass and just enjoying life. They interact with one another and they seem interested when we come over. They have food in front of them, but they're not constantly eating. They take breaks, they come get a little bit of food, then they go wander around. And the Cornish Giants never did that. They would just eat all the time. Um, they are a breed that is a little bit slower gaining, they say. But from what we can tell is we've been having just as good, if not better, success with them growing than we did with the Cornish Giants. And they're definitely a breed that I think that we will stick with for our homestead over the Cornish Giants for sure. So if you live in a climate that is similar to ours, where it's a bit more northern, you don't start getting warmer temperatures until about end of May, this is a breed that I would definitely recommend. Um, when it rains, they actually go under their shelter. They are intelligent enough to do that, and they are just a, a good breed for this type of setup. So if you have a pastured poultry type of setup like we do, where we're moving chickens and chicken tractors every couple of days, I would recommend these guys over the Cornish Giants for sure. So that's kind of our experience. Let me know in the comments if you guys have a different type of breed of chicken that you prefer, or maybe you really like the Cornish Giants. That's all good for you. I'm happy that they're working out for you because they are cheaper to buy as chicks so um, and easier to find as well but if you guys um, have any questions or comments for sure drop them in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you guys